Hello, and welcome to the Kosh. I am your host, Timber Smith, and the Kosh is a podcast that spotlights people who have had an association with Oshkosh and the surrounding Fox Valley area. As, a, as in every week, I am super excited to be here with you. Thank you guys for tuning in again. I appreciate you out there in Kosh land. And uh, this week, we are going a totally different direction with the show. Like, I'm super, like, this is going to be cool. Like, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this guest. Uh, my guest this week, his name is Michael Taylor. Michael, how you doing over there? Doing great. I just wanted to say thank you so much for having me come on your show. And I look forward to talking to you about uh, anything y'all want to talk about. Oh, no, man. I'm I'm the one that's uh, super grateful that you are here on the cash and uh, giving us some time. And uh, I think this is going to be fun. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, uh, yeah, it, it, I'm new. Like I said, I'm kind of new to Oshkosh. I'm, I'm completely in love with the city. It's probably one of my favorite cities. And I've lived in four states and Wisconsin. Y'all win. Yeah, my book. Absolutely. I'm going to, I, you know, I can't say that I've lived a lot of other places. Basically I lived where I was stationed for a little bit. And, uh, otherwise I've lived in Wisconsin. I've gotten the opportunity to, to, to visit a bunch of places, but not necessarily, you know, hunker down there for any sub time. So, I mean, that's cool. I'm glad to see that the cash is on the list of awesome places to, to live. It, it definitely is. And you know, y'all beat us uh, being from East Tennessee and, uh, I was born and raised in Knoxville, so y'all could probably tell my accent pretty quickly. I'm not not from around these parts, but uh, you know, it's it's so cheap to live here, and the people are so good. Um, very hardworking uh, class, and y'all have just the best beer I've ever had in my life. Oh well, <laughs> you got that right. You know, I'm not gonna lie; that's just Wisconsin in general. We oh got, yeah, we got options. Oh, All yeah. right, mm-hmm. so uh, Michael, uh, can you please share? a little something about yourself. You started to so far. And uh, what is your connection to the Kosh? So my connection with the Kosh is uh, pretty much my fiance. Um, I met her in 2017 and I was, um, we were filming a reel for a a TV show, potential TV show. I'm I'm still not allowed to talk about. Um, (laughs) <laughs> that's cool you so so let me just you know i can't just roll over that so there's potentially you have an opportunity to uh to have a tv show yes um i can't go too much in the detail about it but what i can say it's about ghost hunting and i ended up driving from new orleans down in louisiana all the way up to milwaukee um and we ended up filming across several states we we stopped in kentucky tennessee um, we go start all over New Orleans and uh, all the way up to a place called Shaker Cigar Bar in Milwaukee. And uh, believe it or not, that's where I met my fiance was ghost hunting. What? And, yeah. First of all, you already had me at ghost hunting because I don't know what ghost hunting could possibly be. Number two, why would you want to hunt a ghost? I'm trying to get away from ghosts. <laughs> um, I do not mess with things that I feel are supernatural. I'm going to let them just go on and be in peace. You know, it's, it's, uh, um, when it comes to ghost hunting, I think what it is, is there's so many things going on with Hollywood, with all these TV shows that, uh, really overhype things. And when you really, uh, when it comes to learning about the paranormal and, and it's, it's a science, essentially, it really is a science. And if you approach it as a science, as kind of a scientific, as a, uh, blah, excuse me, a scientist, uh, it's like, biology or anything else that you do um for me the paranormal has kind of affected me my whole life you know being born in east tennessee we grew up down the road from a civil war battlefield Ooh, and uh did it feel some kind of way it did and in fact late at night we would hear gunshots near this battlefield it was on a campbell station road down in knoxville tennessee and uh yeah there was a couple soldiers it was the battle of farragut uh tennessee and there was an admiral involved, and he ended up, I think, he ended up getting killed on that battlefield. I'll have to go back and read the stories. But so I, I've been around the paranormal my whole life. Mm. Well, we're going to come back and, and dig in a little deeper on that. Absolutely. You know, because uh, I'm fascinated <laughs> with that one. That's, that's, 
that's not something you you can talk about every day. So so far, so how long you have you been around the cash so far? How long? So I've been here for let's see about six months now. I moved here uh, let's see back in August, and it's what almost April. So yeah. Is that about six months? And so and then and and you've messed around in a Wisconsin winter now. How'd that treat you? It was brutal. This yeah. is the coldest place I've ever lived in my life. Mm. <laughs> I feel you on that. That's that. Bruh. That's some problems going on in that. Um, oh yeah, winter and this was a light winter. This wasn't even a bad winter. No, like I had a lot of folks tell me that, and I've never driven my car on a frozen lake before. I was so terrified. I had to do it though. <laughs> but you, you trying to tell me you ain't been here a full year and you decided to take the car out on the ice? So you, you, you went for it. I went for it. I'm a bit of a risk taker, and mm. I. <laughs> Well, I'm, I, you know, I don't even know what to say about that. I'm, I'm not against ice fishing. I'm just not going to go out there often. Oh, like, yeah. I'm not going to say I've never been out there, but it took some coaxing. Yeah, I was, I was scared. You know, I didn't know this, but in Wisconsin, they want you to roll down the windows and I guess and take your seatbelt off and all that stuff in case right. your car goes under. Right. And I just bought this car in like November. Whoa. To make it even worse. And you took it on the ice. Absolutely. I had to. Mm. <laughs> Man, I'm going to tell you. Bruh. I, the, the craziest thing I did, and this was when I was younger in college, mm-hmm. I used to have a Cadillac DeVille. And if you think I didn't somehow end up taking the Cadillac out on the ice, <laughs> worst idea ever. Just, I, I don't even know. That's That's youthful ignorance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Youthful ignorance. Definitely. All right. So, all right. Uh, so, Michael, are you ready for uh, the first segment? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. So, the first segment is what in the world is going on with? And that is where you start with the phrase what in the world is going on with? And then uh, you you end the sentence. Okay. What do you got going on? Well, ah. Uh... You know, it's been kind of a quiet year. Um, you know, um, I, I guess I'm going to have to say what in the world's going on with, uh, well, that's, that's a tough one. Um, uh, so you just, everything, you feel everything's running smooth. It kind of is, really. Like, this has actually been an okay year for me. I know it's been very unfortunate for a lot of folks out there, and I really feel for you guys uh, listening. Um I've been very blessed this year, actually, you know, with my fiance and I kind of helping each other's mental health out and everything like that and uh, keeping each other accountable and stuff. Okay. So I've been so, I haven't really watched the news in months, Uh, believe it or not. So I have no idea what's going on outside in the world. Hey, you you (laughs) might be, you might be the smartest man in the world out there not watching the news. I'm going to give you some credit for that. Like if you got time to watch the news, you got time to read a book or work out or, or better your life. You know, that that's how I see it. You got I mean, you should, everyone should know what's going on. You know, like what in the world's going on with the, with the world, with uh, your neighbors, you know, people you care about, you're with your family, what in the world's going on with, you know, your mom, your dad, you know, brother, sister. But, uh, you know, with everything going on in the world right now with COVID and, and everyone being affected by loss of jobs, I mean, you know, I just, I guess what in the world is going on with you and how are you going to make a difference from here on out? Does that Ooh, kind of make sense? That's a different approach. Yeah, a little You're different calling approach. out people. Yeah. Calling the people out, saying, you know. Like what's going on with y'all? With y'all, yeah. What's going on with y'all? What what is what are you wanting to do to make this world a better place for yourself? And how are you going to change from this pandemic? You know, it, it's made me a stronger person. I've I've learned to cook. I've learned to you know, I used to hate cooking. Now I love it. I can't stop. <laughs> mm. I feel you on that. Yeah. I, me and cooking are, uh, we, we, we have become friends. I am an, uh, an Instapot chef. Yeah. People, the people don't understand what that is at any given time. You, you, if you really know me, know me, I am nice with an Instapot. There, <laughs> there's not much I can't handle. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's, yeah. You know? Um, okay. No, no, that's good. All right. I like, I like that. That's a very different direction to take it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think people can appreciate that. Um, my, what in the world is going on with is what in the world is going on with Biden having to run everywhere? You know, (laughs) seriously, like my man, if, if, if he ain't 80, a hair off 80. Mm -hmm. And every time I see them with a video of him and he going somewhere, I feel like he's running. 
<laughs> you the president, man. Yeah. You ain't got to run. Bruh. I mean, seriously. And, and I mean, I guess I appreciate the fact that he feels that sense of urgency. But, you know, I also saw a, a, a video where he, he tripped a going up some stairs into an airplane. And I was like, no, nah, we can't. You can't go out like that. Wow. If you're going to go out, let's not go out tripping up the stairs because you can't stop running. <laughs> All right. So that's that's my what in the world is going on with Biden. Slow down. Mm-hmm. You ain't got to run everywhere. You the president. You'll get there. You got handlers to help. You right. know, let's let's try to let's try to stay healthy in a whole nother way by not busting yourself up. We need them around for sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. So we're going to move on to the next segment. And the next segment is word association. So I'm going to mention some words and you're going to tell me what comes to mind when I say these words. Um, so the first word is food. Oh, man. Buffalo wings. Buffalo Absolutely. wings. I love love buffalo wings. I'm obsessed with them. I'm making them myself, you know, this year. Yeah. So that's the first thing that comes to mind when I hear food is buffalo wings. That's it. <laughs> that's it. So that's it. so do you got a favorite mm. place to get buffalo wings from? Is there a special buffalo sauce? I mean, what, what is Cuz I mean, I'm wing partial myself. Are you? Awesome. Oh yeah. Um honestly, you know, there's a great place here in Appleton. Um, it's not really necessary. They do have Buffalo wings, but they also have fried chicken. And I I lived in Augusta, Georgia for years and they have the best chicken in the world down there in the South. Right. Um, you know, there's a place in Appleton. I'm trying to think of the name, but they sell soul food. Uh, are you talking about the cozy, uh, cozy corner? Yeah. The cozy corner. Yes. I mean, I've known the cozy for some time. I love that place. The place is nice. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, it, it honestly makes me feel like I'm back at home. Surprisingly. Yeah. Yeah. I I just get that whole home feel to that place. Like you're back in Tennessee. Yeah. Ooh, I bet you they would like to know that because that's a lot of cred. Oh, I know it is. It is like, and I'm, I'm born and raised in the South and I've been all over and I've eaten pretty much all over the country and, in the world a little bit. I've lived outside the United States too. And, um, but yeah, the cozy corner is probably one of my favorite restaurants in the world. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I like the cozy myself. I haven't been there in a minute, but, uh, I'm always willing to go back and visit, man. You got to, you got to. All right. Next Mm -hmm. word, cocktail slash beer. Ooh. Um, yeah, definitely beer. Like I said, Wisconsin, uh, y'all have the best beer I ever had. So, there's so much beer options here that I've never even heard of. And it, well, I, I'm a big beer drinker. Beer has bloomed. I mean, you know, back in the day, I felt like there was only a couple. You'd be, you can get you some Miller, a Budweiser, a Paps, something like that. But now you can get all these crazy flavors. and Yeah, y'all got this thing called the Double Barrel Whiskey Barrel Beer or something like that. Mm. And I'm just like, wow, that, that'll... That'll make you feel good after a couple glasses of that. <laughs> where, 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 where you, um, where's that at? So they have it at uh, Bar 430. And um, I'm trying to think of the name of some of these restaurants here because I'm still kind of new here. Right. Um, Bar 430 is my go-to. I like that place. I do too. Yeah, oh that's, a, that's a very nice setting. Mm-hmm. It's got a nice atmosphere in there. You know what they also have? Bar 430, and I haven't been there um, it's not a regular go-to, but I've definitely, uh, you know, I've I've gone there. Their burger, oh yeah, is off the charts. Mm. That burger, whoever, and I, like I said, I haven't been there in a long time. But there was a there was a gentleman back there before that used to make this burger, and he would make that thing to perfection. Mm. Whatever you wanted, as far as the the kind of the medium, well, yeah, man. <laughs> that burger, I, to this day, I've never forgotten about that burger. Wow. Yeah, I mean, they, they got so much great food. Bar 430 and a Ruby Owl right here on Main Street. Oh. They're my go-to places. You know, Ruby Owl, I've learned that they have these uh, spicy chicken wraps. Yes, and they're super good. They have a spicy salad there. I think I told what? you about this. Yeah, it's a... It's a buffalo salad, and it's probably one of the spicy salads I've had in the world. Like, I, you know. Bruh. Wait, what do you mean? Like, uh, spicy how? Like, uh, I mean, what? See, you got me. I'm fascinated. Yeah. Like, to say spicy and salad together kind of just feels wrong. It, it does, you know. And, and honestly, I didn't know how I felt about it. And then I just went in there one day, and I ordered it. 
but it, it's pretty brutal. Um, they they have like buffalo wings that are uh, in the salad. Right. But they use like a different type of seasoning that just intensifies it. And I don't know what I think it might have. It might have ghost peppers in it. I'm not too sure. Oh, yeah, it's, it's pretty brutal. But like, it's I love heat. Hmm. But anything at the point in which we go to ghost pepper level or Carolina Reaper level, I'm 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 gonna have to I'm gonna have to take <laughs> a back seat to that because that's a that's a that's a heat level that no longer is pleasurable. It's brutal. Right. Yeah. Okay. Netflix. Let's see, so Netflix. Um, I'm trying to think what shows have been on Netflix lately. I have been watching a little bit this past year. Um, I know Hulu had Always Sunny in Philadelphia, which is one of my favorite shows. I don't know if you've ever seen that or not. Nope, never watched that, but it um, seems funny. It is. You know, I, I really uh, admire uh, Charlie Day. He's the uh, comedian involved in writing the stories for that TV show. Okay. I think he's got his doctorate degree. He's a super genius, but in the show he plays this janitor. Uh, it's just kind of this slimy janitor that acts like he has no idea what anything's going on. It's, just, it's a comedy, but it's one of my favorites. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Amazon. Amazon? Um, Honestly, I've been... Giving them a bit of money this year for sure, especially with staying home during uh, the COVID uh, pandemic. Nice. I've mostly been ordering like old 80s horror films. I'm big into collecting a lot of that stuff. Really? Oh, yeah. Old 80s horror films. Oh, like, 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 like what? I mean, help me out. So I'd have to say one of my favorite classic 80s horror films would be Motel Hell. And it's kind of a comedy. Um, but it's 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 very entertaining. You would love Motel Hell, and then there's also Silent Night, Deadly Night, Part One and Part Two. Which Part Two is just I can't stop laughing every time I watch it. It's so bad, it's funny. Oh, like it, it just puts you in a good mood. Surprisingly, <laughs> 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 makes you feel better so, about your life. So you're saying uh, the horror flick is so bad that it just puts a smile on your face? Oh, absolutely. That's crazy. Absolutely. Well, how do you know? I'm, hey, I won't knock it till I try it. Right. Oh, yeah. man, there's some movies out there that are just so terrible. You're like, why would anyone make this? But I have to own it. I'm that guy. Yeah, that I'm guy. Like, I'm that guy. Okay. Yep. So horror <laughs> collector. Mm-hmm. Okay. I I don't know. I, you know, the only horror flick. I love suspense movies. Yeah. Suspense is where, I, where my true love is at. Um, things like uh, Silence of the Lambs, oh, Seven, um, things uh, things along that, you know, uh, Usual Suspect, uh, those kinds of movies. I like to think. Oh, yeah. Like, have you, you know, seen Get Out? Get Out's oh, a great one. Yeah. I love Jordan Peele. Let me, t- let me tell you something. Get Out made me feel some kind of way. Yeah, definitely. It put me in a place, and I was like, whoa. Yeah. I'm not, to me. As a black man, that might be the scariest movie I've ever seen. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, like, that whole movie, I didn't see that till this year, and I saw Us, which is, I guess, the, also another Jordan Peele film. He's, right. he's remaking Candyman, which I'm super excited about. I love the original Candyman. Oh, man. That was on some different. I tell you this, I ain't going to look in no mirrors and say uh, Candyman three times. <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone, you know. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Tony Tony Todd, he's actually coming to Chicago in April, so yeah. you can actually meet him. It's uh, at a Days of the Dead convention. I've met him before. Okay, and super awesome guy. Uh, he he's so funny. I I didn't realize it was Tony Todd until I got in the elevator with him. Oh, and he was wearing a hat over his face because he was going out there to do signings and take pictures at the. Uh, it's like a comic con uh, for horror celebrities. So I got in the elevator and I see this big tall man standing behind me with a hat over his head. I'm kind of looking. I'm kind of like, "What the heck?" He's wearing a pea coat, you know. And uh, the elevator door opens up, and I'm like, "Oh my gosh, that's that's freaking Tony Todd!" And he just starts laughing. And he goes up in the elevator and <laughs> shoots back up. <laughs> that's cool. He's a character. I love him. Oh, oh man, that is a, that is one of the great classics. Yeah. Okay. Uh, music. So music is very, very important to me. Um, you know, being born and raised in Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, I, I got into guitar when I was eight years old. So my pa- my family, I got a really rough background childhood bringing up. I didn't know my father very well. So uh, the only thing that I knew of my father was he loved to play music, left his guitars laying around the house, and he just kind of split. 
So I picked up the guitar when I was eight years old, and I was so obsessed with punk rock and thrash metal. Mm. And I do love uh, funk music like James Brown. <laughs> Me too. You can't go wrong with some good funk. Oh, I know. Like I- I'm big into the whole Motown uh, stuff. Um, oh, BB King. I'll listen to him all day, and then. I'll listen to thrash metal like Slayer, Metallica, Anthrax. Um, you got it. I don't know if I've ever heard somebody say BB King and thrash metal in the same breath. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> That's fantastic. You know, like I'll invite people over and they go, they'll, they'll hear like, uh, I don't know, um, Lady Gaga. And then next up is, uh, oh gosh, um, oh, Mayhem, which is a, a black metal band. I don't know if you know much about black metal, but. They started in Norwegian black metal music. Um, okay. You know, it, they call it satanic music, but I'm just in it for hearing the sounds of the drums and the the guitar, and I'm just fascinated by all all kinds of music. Like, okay. I'll go from Boys in the Hood, Easy E, oh, and then I'll mix it up with some thrash metal, black metal, doom metal. Um, yeah, that's a wide range. Yeah, it, it is, and you know, um, haven't played music my whole life. Um, I, I did play in some punk rock bands called U.S. Police State uh, down in Tennessee. And uh, and also I helped out with uh, some other bands just all over the country. And uh, I got to open up for some of the um, ex-members of the Misfits. Um, I don't know if... Yeah, I know who the Misfits are. Yeah. I mean, they're they're famous. Yeah, I got to open famous up for um, the former singer, uh, Michael Graves. I know he got in some trouble this year, but uh, I, I have met... Uh, I've opened up for him, uh, Jerry only Doyle. I've met several times and, uh, really great people, you know, really good people. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Music. You, there's a lot going on there. Yeah. Um, military. Okay. Um, so military, uh, I served about uh, roughly nine years in the U S army. Um, it was both on active duty and both in the national guard. Um, I'd have to say with the military um, was probably the best part of my life. It, it really made me grow and I really needed it at that time in my life because, you know, when I, when I turned 18, graduating high school, my mom said, son, you're either going to go to college. You're going to go to trade school. You're going to go to the military. You're going to go to jail. That sounds like, uh, is there a manual for parents? Cause I feel like that's a talk that a lot of parents have, have, you know, Bro. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, um, I recommend every young person out there just, just to do two years of active duty if possible, because it, it really does impact you. Um, especially for troubled youth. Like I was, I, I was getting in trouble with the law when I was a kid, believe it or not. And uh, military, it really woke me up. You know, I had a man with a brown hat screaming at me one morning. Mm. <laughs> you know? Mr. Drill Sergeant. Oh, your yeah. Your mother, your father, your aunt, your uncle. Everything. So uh, that really, Drill Sergeant Kaya, he really uh, woke me up and shook me to the core. And uh, honestly, he made me a better person, made me a harder worker, uh, you know, and uh uh, straight after basic training, you know, a year later, I went to Afghanistan. I did a combat tour over there for about a year and then learned a lot from the Afghan people, a wonderful, wonderful people. Like, I wouldn't trade that experience for the world. That's nice to hear. You know what? I don't think a lot of people understand um, what always happens when you're deployed and um, how you have to interact with the people in the culture. And it's not – a lot of it is peacekeeping work – or work to help um, stabilize regions. Yeah, uh, it really is. It's you know you're building connections with these with these folks, and you have to be respectful. I mean, it'd be like me coming in your house being rude, right? You know, who would who would do that? I'd take get out. You know, <laughs> so it's you know the the folks there really made me more humble, and um, you know you just come back to the states and you realize wow how how lucky we have it. You know, um, right for sure. It's nice when you get to see a broader perspective of the world. Oh, absolutely. You know, and uh, they're they're just good people like us. You know, they just they want to get by. You know, buy food for their families, have a job, buy a house. Same thing that we want. And everyone wants. Right. So um, we're always uh, the human human uh, humankind is by far more more uh, we're more have more in common than not. Right. 
Absolutely. Okay. So the next segment is called the naughty slash heroes corner. Uh, anything, uh, you got someone and what you do is you nominate. It's not a person. It could be an organization. It can be a, it can be whatever you want it to be. Uh, anybody you'd like to nominate to either one of those corners? Yeah, I'm going to have to say big brothers, big sisters. Um, I've been a part of that program, uh, most of my life. Um, I got involved with that when I was probably in the second grade or third grade, roughly. Yeah. And it's for, you know, youthful teenagers or, you know, kids that just, uh, grew up in kind of like broken households that father or mother wasn't in the picture and single parents, you know, uh, they're working all the time. And if you got brothers and sisters, you don't really, you know, you kind of learn it on your own. So, uh, life on your own. Um, but Big Brothers Big Sisters, they're a great program, and I plan on getting involved in it uh, again here soon. And you just get to help the youth out, and that's what they need. Hey, I give a big shout out to Big Brothers Big Sisters. I think that's a great program. I do think you're right. Youth need, if they don't have the opportunity, and I'm not talking about necessarily that the parents are bad or anything, but people got to survive. So some people got to work. There's not always time to spend the way you want to because you're busy trying to survive and put food on the plate of your families and, um, you know, but stu- uh, children still need um, relationships with adults who care about them, uh, guidance, you know, the things you need, the things, right. And you know, I, why, <clears throat> if you don't mind me asking, uh, why big brothers, big sisters, why, why is it so personal to you? Um, I would say because I had a big brother named Bill Hahnemann who really, uh, made a great impact on my life. And he was the one that persuaded me to go into the military. Okay. Um, I dropped out of college twice. I was a horrible student. I barely graduated high school and yeah, wow. I was terrible with school. And, uh, he was an engineer. Bill Hahnemann was an engineer. And he said, Hey Mike, you know, I was in the army during the Vietnam era and uh really intense guy. He, he's super nice, super respectful, but he kind of reminds me of, uh, Clint Eastwood from the Grand Torino a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. That's so fantastic as a description. <laughs> yeah, he, he really is. He's just really intense. And, you know, he uh, never got married, never had kids. But he did so much for the community in Knoxville, Tennessee. And I met him, and I was this kid just full of anxiety and depression issues and just, you know, uh, growing up in a rough family. And uh, he just kind of grabbed me by the shoulders shook me up and made me realize what the difference between where I could be, um, with the military, military, you know, and what, what education means and what it can do for your life. And that's something that I've learned the hard way, you know, several times. I'd like to give a shout out to Mike because Mike sounds like a hell of a man. I appreciate it. (laughs) I appreciate it, Denver. All right. So, now we're going to move into the topic of the week. The topic of the week every every week is picked by the guests themselves. And um, I'm super excited about this topic of the week because I'm not quite sure that this would ever happen any other way. So the topic of the week this week is ghost hunting. So, uh, look, Mike, I don't know nothing about ghost hunting. Yeah. Let me tell you, I do the opposite. I ghost run. <laughs> if there's a ghost, I'm running. So break it down. So ghost hunting started for me when I was, yeah, about eight, seven or eight years old. And I thought I saw a a woman in my house in Knoxville and it it just really scarred me. I actually saw a child psychologist, you know, and I talked to a doctor for a long time about it. But I saw a woman one morning, it was like probably 4 a.m., just staring at me from down the hallway. And For real? For real. For real. And I thought it was a robber. So I, I started freaking out. As a seven-year-old kid, you start yelling for your parents. You're running. You're like, what in the world is that? And, uh, yeah, it was a woman. And uh, I don't know anything about that story, uh, about why she's there, what, why there's energy in that house um, that my mom purchased. But it, it scarred me for most of my life, and it made me more fascinated into in ghosts and the supernatural and, uh, you know, um, I, like I said, I've, I've ghost hunted 38 states now, and I'm hoping to hit all 50 in the next 10 years. Bruh. <laughs> Dude, wait, wait. I got to go back to that. You ghost hunted in 38 states. 
Yes. Yeah, that, that's so like like you going state to state looking for for ghosts. Yes. Man, that's deep. That sounds some different. Yeah. Um and, and honestly, what got me to go travel more into ghost hunting was uh in two thousand and three there was this old abandoned insane asylum down the road from me from where I grew up. Okay. And it was abandoned. And uh, I just remember one day my friend and I were like, hey, let, you know, being kids, teenagers, 13, 12 year old kids, hey, man, let's uh, let's go in there and just run around the uh, asylum and see if we find anything spooky, you know, being uh, Bruh. pesky kids. <laughs> I'm, uh, look, I'm thinking the exact opposite. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, we ended up going in this asylum. And, uh, you know, it had all the hospital beds in there, and it was Lakeshore Asylum. Uh, it's torn down now, and it's now a park, but even walking there at night, you still get the creeps because there's no lights out there. It's pitch black. and um, But we ended up going inside that asylum. We, we snuck in through this little door, and we walked around, and I remember we walked out into this basketball court. It was an inside basketball court, and a basketball was slammed on the floor. We started hearing laughing. What? Yes. No. And I thought, okay, A, this is a homeless guy messing with us, or B, we're dealing with something real, and uh, we didn't want to wait to find out, so we ended up booking it. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. Facts. Yes. I, I'm out of there. Yes. I'm with you. Look, you wouldn't even have got that far with me. <laughs> We'd have never heard a ball bounce. Yeah. You know, it, it, it traumatized us, and we, we ended up booking it, and, you know, that adrenaline rush is like going on a on a roller coaster. You get hooked. And there's a lot of adrenaline when it comes to ghost hunting, a lot of energy. And, you know, uh, a lot of it is overhyped. I'm not going to lie to you, Timber. Like a lot of the TV shows I've been invited on, you know, um, I won't name them. Um, but uh, they, uh, they're they going for ratings. And I feel like with this new technology era that we have, um, a lot of kids are picking up cameras now saying I'm a ghost hunter. But there's a lot of science to it. You know, you, you break got, that. Can you break that down? Because, Absolutely. Because you know, I I think that's that's fascinating. So yeah. you know, it's bigger than just picking keep, up a camera and picking up a camera yeah. and catching catching something. What's the science? So you got to know the difference between dust, asbestos, and orbs. And I've had so many people say, "Oh, look what I caught," and I don't want to be disrespectful because I don't want to be rude to nobody. But everyone has their own way of doing things. But to know the difference between dust, um. You know, uh, if you, I don't know, just wave a blanket in front of your camera. You know, you're going to see these little balls of light and people go, oh, look, there's orbs, there's orbs. And uh, I had this lady try to tell me that she had all these orbs. Um, I go to the Birdcage Theater in Tombstone, Arizona a few years ago. And she's like, look at all these orbs are coming off the table. But the Birdcage Theater has been there for hundreds of years. Okay. And that place is dusty as could be. So, um, you know, um, when it comes, even with asbestos, I mean, when you go to old homes, haunted places, like crawling around wherever, uh, you'll see a lot of asbestos too. But when you when you see an orb, and this is the biggest distinction uh, for me, um, you'll see it with your own eyes first. And then you'll catch it on camera, and they can come in, in as a blue color, green, white. When you're saying, can you, all right, because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm ghost ignorant. No, no, you're fine. All right, so what's an orb? So an orb is a ball of light of energy um, that is repeating itself, um, whether it be a, uh, a residual haunting. A residual haunting is technically someone that's energy stuck in that time period that never left. Mm. So it's kind of creepy, but you'll go to like, I've been to George Washington's house, you know, childhood home. Okay. And, uh, you know, if you get to stay the night there, you'll, you'll see energy or like a ball of light or something happening at a certain time, you know, that's why I always tell uh, beginner ghost hunters, take notes of what time you capture it, see if you can capture it the next day to see if it's maybe the building's making noise. Maybe, you know, it's setting or maybe there's electrical issues, HVAC issues. Um, but, yeah, that's what an orb is. It's energy that's stuck in a place uh, that uh, keeps repeating itself um, for, for whatever reason. And that's kind of what a job, what a ghost hunter's job is, is to figure out why it's doing that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to lie. I feel like there's an energy shift happening. So, <laughs> Oh, definitely. You know, it, it, it's kind of like dealing with snakes. You know, uh, I'm horrified of snakes. 
I'm terrified of spiders. Uh, I've seen camel spiders, but ghosts, I mean, doing with the paranormal, it's just another day for me. I've done it so long now. Okay. You know? So when you are ghost hunting, mm -hmm. what happens when you actually run into one? You try to film as, as much as you can. Um, you know, the most haunted place I've ever been to um, is this place called Shaker Cigar Bar in Milwaukee. And, uh, you know, uh, it's owned by Bob Weiss. He's a really good friend of mine, and he's been terrific. He's He runs a YouTube series called Shaker Cigar Bar. I'm featured on it as well. Okay. And, uh, thank you. Uh, he... Uh, uh, he's just he's just a really great uh, host and tour guide and everything. But uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about Shakers uh, because this place, I captured the most activity. Um, like I said, I've, I've been to Waverly Hills Sanatorium in Kentucky. I've stayed the night in several sanatoriums, prisons. Um, I even got locked into James Earl Ray's cell. He's the man that killed Martin Luther King. Mm. And I actually played the I Have a Dream speech in his jail cell, and they locked the door of me in there and left me alone for 45 minutes. And talk about intensity. What happened? So I started hearing a lot of banging noises, uh, you know, and it is an old prison. Um, and they do make noises, especially this place was called Brushy Mountain State Prison in Tennessee. And, uh, you know, uh, you'd hear things chip off the ceiling. You're like, oh, is that a ghost? What is that when it's just paint? You know, it, it's just due to it being so old. And um, I remember hearing a, a man's voice in that jail cell just screaming. I don't know what exactly it was saying, but it was just a yell. Bruh. That's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm telling you right now, I'm feeling some kind of way. Oh, no. And, and I, they didn't give me a flashlight, nothing. So I'm locked in, in James Earl Ray's cell, and I'm hearing just, ah, you know, just this screaming. And all I see is darkness, just blackness. And uh, I think my younger brother was outside of the jail. Like, outside was the closest anyone was to me. That's how far everybody kind of was. And I was banging on the jail cell, yelling for help. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You think? Yeah, it was. It was like getting trapped in a, a cage with a lion. That's kind of how it felt. It just. It was that intimidating. What is it? Um, so I know it's not just a visual thing. Mm -hmm. What did it feel like? Almost like getting electrocuted. That's kind of the best way I can say. You know, uh, for me, it affects people differently. Like I used to be an electrician. I've been electrocuted dozens of times and uh, kind of like that. You just pull away, you jump back. Um, for me, I, I'm one of those weirdos. I like to run towards things usually to try to document as much as possible because with ghost hunting being so new and so mainstream now, uh, heck I've had people tell me, look at this great phone app. It's guaranteeing me to find a ghost sitting right here in the living room. Those phone apps, they're in it for the money. There's seriously phone apps for that. Yes. And, and half this, half these people that I'm meeting, they just, they don't know. They don't know. So they think it's real. So I just want to educate people. Right. Because, you know, with ghost hunting not being proven, like it's, it's not proven. Everything's debatable with ghost hunting. Um, a lot of businesses now are, are hopping on that boat saying, oh, well, we'll make this phone app and we'll make $20, $30 a month uh, to guarantee you something. Mm. So that's why I tell I'm warning people to be careful with those phone apps. But um, anyways, um, back to what I was saying. Uh, I was going to go back to Shakers. Uh, Shakers Cigar Bar is probably the most haunted place in the in the country, in my opinion, because, um, you know, it was a it was an old brothel owned by Al Capone, and Al Capone actually threw the tombstones away, but left the bodies there underneath this this old brothel, mm. and you can stay the night there if you want. If you want to do a ghost hunt, we definitely could, Timber. Uh, I'm going pass. You're going pass? I'm going to pass. <laughs> There's no way in the world. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead. No. No. No <laughs> way. No way. That's out of bounds there. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, um, but Shakers, you know, it was this old brothel, and then serial killer uh, slash cannibal Jeffrey Dahmer used to go to this brothel. When, oh, when it was a bar in the see, 80s. Right there, man. See, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I, that, so you threw Scariest Place in America and Jeffrey Dahmer All in, the same was place. in the same place? Yes. Nah, man. No. No, no, no. <laughs> Bruh. No. 
<laughs> yeah, it's it, it's horrific. I mean, that place is so intense. Um, Bob had owned the, he's owned the bar since the eighties, and he met Jeff. He met Jeffrey Dahmer. You know, the guy came into his bar. He'd watched people, and Bob had to throw him out of the bar several times. You know, woo, and uh, talk about you know crazy. A few months later, he's all over the news because at the time, you know, no one knew who Jeffrey Dahmer was. Correct. He was just some creep coming into bars, bugging people, and Bob threw him out. And uh, next thing you know, he's like, that's that guy I kept throwing out of my bar. I was being all weird, following people around. He's all over the news. And, yeah, he actually uh, has his chair there that Jeffrey Dahmer used to sit on, so he pulled the chair away because he thought it was bad luck. Mm. So he still has that chair. No, nah, man, why are you keeping the chair? <laughs> you got to, look, you got to burn the chair. Yeah, it's. I mean, Jeffrey's on some different, you know. That's right. A, Jeffrey. Is infamous. Infamous. Right. Yeah. There, there's those killers who, you know, you might think some, but that man, mm -hmm. infamous. Yeah. Like, talk about what the definition of evil is and mental illness. I think Dahmer had also a lot of mental health problems that, uh, unfortunately, during those times, there was no way he could have gotten help. And, you know, I'm... Speaking of mental health, you know, I'm glad that nowadays we at, we're getting more and more programs to help people before something like that ever happens again. Mm. And I pray yeah. it doesn't, but you yeah, know. That, that, that's that's a whole nother level of mental health. Yeah, like that was someone that needed to be locked up immediately. Immediately. And, yeah, and you know, just going into that bar though, it, and it's it's about four stories roughly, and. The basement, though, has so much activity going on because it used to be a, a cemetery. Oh, and, uh, so this bar was built on top of a cemetery. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. So there's and bodies then, under there. Wait, so you got a bar yep. built on a cemetery where Jeffrey Dahmer used to hang out. Yes. Bruh. That's the most wrongness I've ever heard in my life in one yeah. sentence. Absolutely. And it was a brothel. So there was a lot oh. of also a brothel. Wrong. So talk about a horror film. <laughs> and 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 your friend owned this. Yes. And Bob he wanna does. keep owning this. Yes. Oh my God. He's owned it for the eight he still owns it today, and that's why I recommend people all the time take a tour, take a Shaker Cigar Bar tour, uh, if you're interested in, in ghost hunting to the listeners listening to this. Um I've taken dozens of ghost tours. Um my top two are Spooked in Seattle, which is the catacombs for Seattle, which we'll talk about here in a moment. And uh, Shaker Cigar Bar, uh, because you have everything from serial killers to uh, deceased, uh, I'm going to call them working wo women. You know, I, yes. they don't like using the term prostitutes, no. but working women. Work, uh, working and, um, people. Working people. There we go, yeah. And, um, yeah, uh, I, I stayed the night there probably four times now. And uh, the first two nights I'd stayed at Shaker's, they locked me in there, and I could not leave. And I almost jumped out of the third story window out of this place. It was Whoa. that horrifying. Yeah. yeah, it was that deep. It was that deep. Um, I can talk a little bit about it. Um, I won't go into too much detail. Um, that's stuff that we'll, you guys can view on the YouTube channel, and it's going to be hopefully featured here on television here in the next few months. But okay. uh, yeah, Shakers though it um, it really messed with me for a very long time. I don't believe spirits can follow you home. Uh, it's never happened to me since 2003 of doing it, but shaker something actually did follow me home and I didn't believe in that. I really didn't. Um, so not warning, not telling people that's going to happen to you, but if you go out there provoking and you go out there, you know, hitting a bee's nest with a baseball bat, you're going to get stung. Mm. You know what I mean? Bruh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it, it's, it's, uh, it, you know, I just remember staying there the first night and I waited for that sun to come up. And I'm looking out that window waiting for it. And they have the cameras pointing at me and stuff. And we're waiting to hear. We ended up seeing everything from apparitions. I've never seen an apparition before. Okay. I never have. I've seen shadow figures and I've seen like balls of light and stuff like orbs. And I've captured um, EVPs, which is electric voice phenomena. Okay. So it's voices from nowhere. But Shakers is the first place I actually saw an actual person vanish in the thin air. And, you know, no, yeah, it was, it was crazy. Mm. There was this, this girl named Molly. Um, she was a working lady during those times. She was actually murdered in this bed that I was sleeping on. 
Bruh. Yes, it was it was insane. So she she was murdered there, and I don't want to be too graphic here, but she was thrown into the fireplace, and then the remains were hidden in the walls at Shakers. What? Yes. And uh, Bob actually found her in the eighties when he was doing work on the building, and uh, found her, you know, uh, deceased body. Unfortunately, called the. Milwaukee Police Department and said, hey, you know, I found human remains on my roof, um, which absolutely spooked me. I didn't know this till recently after we filmed it there. Bruh. <laughs> Ooh. So talk about a bone chilling place. Um, Madison, my fiance and I, we, we met there and uh, caught fate or destiny or, or whatever have you. Um, we put her down in the basement while I was sleeping upstairs in the, the dead deceased lady's bed and she was down there in the basement with all the deceased people from the cemetery what and we've been together ever since (laughs) that that's some new stuff we didn't meet online no i was sleeping in a dead lady's bed she's down in a basement with all these dead bodies (laughs) michael that's some different that's some different kind and 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 this is something that you can pay for to do yes yeah, tours I believe are thirty dollars or less. Um, he gotta, does. It, I, how would you pay to do it? You are gonna have to pay me to do it, and you are gonna have to pay me a lot more than thirty dollars. Yeah, to go sleep in an environment like that. Right. Like you, you can take a tour too. You don't have to stay the night there. You can take. It's like an hour to tour, worth every penny. Uh, for skeptics out there, I highly recommend it. Like I said, I'm more in the debunking business of the paranormal. Um, I try to go into, I disprove a lot of things, but this place is just, it's so hot. There's just so much stuff going on there that I couldn't explain. And I tried and believe me, I've, I've been trying. <laughs> All right. Let's give them a special shout out. What, 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 what is that place called again? It's called Shaker Cigar Bar. And I wanted to give a shout out to Bob Weiss. Okay. Yeah. Shaker Cigar Bar. And if there is a, is they got a website? They do. Um, if you visit Shaker's Cigar Bar, you can go on Facebook, uh, YouTube, even just on Google. Um, you can Google that, and you can find more information about that. Okay. Um, especially for this local area, I highly recommend that. All right. Hey, for all my uh, fellow uh, ghost-curious individuals out there uh, listening to the Kosh, uh, if you go to Shaker's Cigar Bar, I would love to hear how your adventure was. Uh, we will make sure to put some information in the uh, podcast notes about Shaker Cigar Bar because it seems like uh, since it's close to the Kosh, it seems like it's an adventure waiting to happen. Absolutely. Not by Timber, though. No, no way. You wouldn't do it? No, nah, man. Oh, man. There's Let's also see. there's a bunch of places. Wisconsin's got so many uh, ghost tours. Baraboo Inn's a great place. Uh, get permission first, but you can go up to... Ed Gein's place, um, where his house was, which if people don't know about that, that's a Milwaukee serial killer. Um, I have ghost hunt for him too, and I did it legally. There's an illegal way, which I don't recommend anyone to break the law. It's just too dang expensive to pay those tickets off. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> not that you know. Yeah, right. Not that I know. Wink, but wink. Wink, wink. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, just stay out of trouble. Uh, pay for the tour. It's cheaper than a ticket. Trust me when I say that. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. What else? Uh, anything else you would like to share about ghost hunting? Yeah. Um. Gosh, I could talk about ghost hunting all day. Um. Well, I'll, I'll stick with Wisconsin, the Wisconsin area, because folks that are listening are probably curious to know where they can go check out legally that you can go and take a ghost tour at. I highly recommend um, the Baraboo Inn as well. Um, that's also another brothel owned by Al Capone. And, uh, I have stayed the night there and we just did an investigation there last month. And, uh, that place was insane too. They actually have a pole downstairs in the basement where Al Capone's men used to tie people up and shoot them on it. And you can see the bullet rounds in the wood still. What? And there's actually blood stains in the wood. They kept it. They kept it. Cause it's actually one of the main support beams to the building. So they ain't got no choice. They got no choice to keep it. They, they have to keep it or the building's going to fall apart. And uh, BC, um, he's the owner, BC Farr, really good man. Uh, he used to be a NASCAR driver. And uh, and he'll talk to you about race car driving and ghost hunting <laughs> all day. Man. You okay. know. But you guys can stay the night there. That's another great place. Um, 
Yeah, and then there's also um, some places up in Manitowoc that are really haunted. Um, my personal favorite is uh, there's a. It actually made it on Ripley's, believe it or not. Um, this is the only place in the entire world uh, in Manitowoc, Wisconsin, called uh, Dead by Dawn, and not the video game because they actually had the title before the video game came out until Dawn, but Dead by Dawn, and it's a haunted um, Airbnb slash bar, and these people actually run their business out of it. So you can stay the night and actors will scare you all night till 8 a.m. Who wants that? I know. I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, but they're, they're good friends of mine. But the thing is, is that that building's actually haunted in real life. Mm. And it was built in the 1800s and it used to be a dental office. And uh, I've stayed the night there a couple times. And Madison and I've stayed there. We've heard everything from chairs being moved to doors opening and closing, and I've had to go chase down the hallway to try to film it to capture it. But that's another great place, Dead by Dawn. It's 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 super cool. Um, and I'd have to say that and the, another good one in Milwaukee is also the Brumder, which we're doing next month. So I haven't been there yet, but I'm looking forward to going to the Brumder Mansion. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, in some ways, I'm surprised that Wisconsin has so many locations, but then again, I'm not surprised. It's It's got so much history, um, you know, from the gangsters in Chicago. Um, you know, uh, uh, John Dillinger, he's got a hideout here that I haven't had a chance to go to yet in Wisconsin that's super haunted where he did a lot of uh, – he had hid from the cops and had a shootout with them. And, uh, you know, that's, that's next on my list. Uh, now that the weather's warming up, I can drive all the way out there. And COVID, yeah. with COVID being um, hopefully going away, but it isn't going to go away, but everyone being vaccinated, right. everything will open up, and then I can go out and explore more places. That sounds, bruh. I, I don't know what else to say about it. <laughs> um, All right. Yeah, I've stayed the night on two haunted ships. Um, I've stayed the night in a haunted cave, the Bell's Witch Cave down in Tennessee. And uh, I've actually stayed in the world's most haunted dam an actual dam and uh, two floors are underwater and you can scuba dive down there. And there's actually graves underwater. You can scuba dive down to. <laughs> yep. Nope. you nope. You, you, you're good. I'm good. We can go scuba diving down there if you want to. First of all, you, these you're crossing so many things that timber don't do. <laughs> uh, timber doesn't do water. Water is scary enough to me. It's massive. It's consuming. I don't mess with water. Yeah. I don't swim. And uh, I don't mess with ghosts or supernatural things. I leave all that alone. <laughs> I'm going to let them just be in peace. May yeah. they leave me in peace. May we all be in peace. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, I love this. This was cool. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me come on here, you know, and... Uh, this was super cool. Yeah, you know, you guys listening, please uh, look up Creep Show Paranormal. That's a group I run on Facebook, and we're, we're working on the web page right now. And uh, yeah, I'm working on my very first book I'm writing. Okay, so, say that again. What was that Creep Show Paranormal? Creep Show Paranormal. Um, where that name came from was, you know, being an '80s horror film lover, I love. The movie and the TV show is great too, but Creep Show. I don't yes. know if you've ever seen it or not. Yeah, I remember Creep Show. It's yeah. got the it's got the dude that basically looks like Gollum yeah. from uh, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, it's I just love it because, you know, I also I'm into like the cryptid stuff, like, you know, I, I don't really go looking for Bigfoot or Sasquatch or the Dogman, but the Dogman's one of those urban legends around Wisconsin. But a lot of it's always fascinated me. Okay. Um, but ghost, however, that's, that's more my specialty, the paranormal or ghost hunting stuff. All right. Well, I'm just gonna, uh, I'll tell you what, you go ahead and film and I'll watch it, but yeah. I ain't coming with you. <laughs> I'm leave that alone. Bruh. <laughs> All right. This is the time where we're going to start wrapping things up. Um, to all the Kosh listeners out there, once again, as always, Please, 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 as you listen to the show, uh, we are open to comments, suggestions. Uh, we are a work in progress. We're always growing to improve. And even if you just want to share how you feel about things, look, I, there's nothing better than some feedback. I appreciate the feedback, no matter uh, what kind of feedback it is. Uh, please send off communications to askthekosh at 
gmail.com. Once again, that is askthekash at gmail.com. Um, we, I appreciate you making time to let us know how we're doing here. All right. And, uh, Michael, it's the time of the show where we do, uh, we give some shout outs and, and this is one of my favorite parts of the show because, you know, it's nothing better than giving some recognition to some people oh, yeah. out there. So definitely, uh, um, you, you got some shout outs. Yeah. You know, my fiance, Madison Schmidt, absolutely her, um, Everyone from the Veterans Resource Center has been great. Being uh, new from Tennessee, coming up here, they've been really welcoming. The whole community at the uh, uh, UW Oshkosh has been wonderful. So shout out to everybody, you, Michelle Munns, everybody. And uh, definitely shout out to uh, Ross Allison. Uh, he's a ghost hunter I've been working with for a couple years now. He's been a big mentor. He runs Spooked in Seattle Ghost Tours and because I lived in Seattle for a few years. And then Bob Weiss in Shakers. Um, Go book a tour with him. He's he's awesome. And also go book a tour with BC Far from the Baraboo Wind. That's another great place. So shout out to all of them folks. Okay. Um yeah, you know what? If there if you have an email, I'm gonna put it in the uh podcast notes. Uh, sure. So if you want to reach out to uh Michael here and, and uh get maybe some more information. If you are an adventurous ghost hunter, we're going to help and encourage it. Don't call me though. We'll try to encourage you to come with and do a podcast from a haunted place one day. (laughs) It'll never happen. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So uh, my shout outs of the week goes to a couple people. Once again, I got to give a special shout out to the wife because let me tell you something. Uh, The daughter came home to spend the week with us uh, during spring breakish time. And uh, that is where we uh, do recording and things. Uh, in her room because she doesn't actually live here because she is an adult. <laughs> Let's be clear. I am an empty nester. I have no shame in telling people this. Nonetheless, uh, so uh, thank you, uh, the wife, for uh, making things happen and, and, and uh, allowing us to continue making podcasts, even in the midst of a little bit of chaos. She makes it she makes it warm and fun, fun and friendly. I appreciate you, baby. Love you. And... Um, to a special shout out to a gentleman, uh, Nicholas Ambrose. Um, I'm just going to say thank you. I appreciate you, man. You're a good dude. Good looking out. All right. Um, any, this is the, we're, we're getting close to wrapping this all up. Uh, parting words of wisdom. Do you got any parting words of wisdom there, Michael? Parting word of, words of wisdom. And I'm going to say this because, you know, the past, year and a half has been rough on everybody, but this is one thing I'm going to leave with everybody to think about. Uh, you can break my arm, you can break my leg, but you'll never break my will. So everybody keep your will up, focus on what you want to do and, uh, you'll get to where you're going to go. You know, Michael, I love that. That's solid. That uh-huh. is solid words of wisdom. I think that is amazing. Oh, thank you. Well, once again, thank you for being on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. I've, I really appreciate it. This has been a lot of fun. And to all the Kosh listeners out there, to the next time, the Kosh. Perfect.